got a question here about acids, bases and buffers. So if I have a quick read through, you have a go and then I'll go through the answers. So a student supplied with this concentration of potassium hydroxide and this concentration of propanoic acid. And we're given the acid dissociation constant for the propanoic acid. So the first part of the question, we're told that propanoic acid is a weak Bronsted-Lowry acid. What is meant by weak acid and Bronsted-Lowry acid? So there's two things we have to say there. Part B, calculate the pH of this concentration of potassium hydroxide. And then part C, the student dilutes 25 cm cubed of the acid by adding water till they get a total volume of 100 cm cubed. So we have to write the expression for the dissociation constant, Ka for the acid, and then calculate the pH of the diluted solution. Part D, we're told that the propanoic acid reacts with carbonates and alkalis. So write the full equation for the reaction of aqueous propanoic acid with sodium carbonate. And then we have to write an ionic equation for the reaction of aqueous propanoic acid with aqueous potassium hydroxide. Part E, buffer calculation. So we are given the concentrations of the acid and the salt ion. They are both one mole per decimeter cubed. We're given the equilibrium that's set up and we're reminded of the acid dissociation constant for the acid. And we have to use all of this to calculate the pH of the buffer. And that wants the answer to two decimal places. A little bit about explaining how buffers work, in this case on the addition of a small amount of aqueous ammonia. And then the final part of the question, we are told that the student adds this mass of magnesium to a decimeter cubed of the buffer solution and we have to calculate the pH of the new buffer and we again give the answer to two decimal places. So part A, what is meant by weak acid and bronsted Lowry acid? So a bronsted Lowry acid is a proton donor and the weak part, it only partially dissociates in aqueous solution. The pH of a 0.5 mole per decimeter cube potassium hydroxide solution. So there's the equation, KOH would fully dissociate into its ions. So if the concentration of the potassium hydroxide is that, the OH minus concentration is also that due to the one to one ratio. We bring KW in, that's how you calculate the pH of strong alkalis. So KW equals the concentration of the H plus ion multiplied by the OH minus ion concentration. We rearrange for H plus because we know KW and we know the OH minus concentration. So that comes out at an H plus concentration of 2 times 10 to the negative 14, which we have to minus log, and that gives us the pH, 13.7. The Ka for propanoic acid, so it's the equilibrium concentrations of the products over the reactant, so it's that over that. And the calculation now, the pH of the diluted solution. So the student dilutes this volume, this concentration of propanoic acid. So the first thing we need to do is work out, well, how many moles of acid is it, are in these quantities? So that's concentration times volume. So there's that many moles present. And because it's in 100 cm cubed, we divide by that in decimeters cubed to turn that into a concentration. So the concentration of the weak acid is this. And then to calculate the pH, or sorry, to calculate the H plus concentration of a weak acid, it's the square root of Ka times the concentration of the acid. So we were given the Ka value 
we've just calculated that and so we get this for the H plus concentration which we minus log to give us a pH of 2.9 so full equation for the reaction of aqueous propanoic acid with sodium carbonate so just keeping it simple acid plus carbonate makes salt water and CO2 so there's the equation balanced for the reaction between propanoic acid and sodium carbonate. The ionic equation for the reaction of aqueous propanoic acid with aqueous potassium hydroxide, I've just got the simplified, it's got a cancelled down version. So if I can quickly talk through where that comes from. The propanoic acid contains the C2H5COO minus ion and the H plus ion and the aqueous potassium hydroxide contains the K plus ion and the OH minus ion. Now on the other side of the equation the propanoid ion and the potassium ion are going to be both in the salt and so they just cancel out and effectively all that's left are these species here so that's the answer there. Part E is the buffer calculation and we are told the concentration of the acid and the salt we've got the Ka so if you've seen my video on buffers my silly way to remember how to do the pH it's acid over salt so the H plus concentration is the Ka times the acid concentration over the salt concentration so these obviously cancel we minus log this and we get a pH of 4.87. A small amount of aqueous ammonia is added to the buffer solution. So if I just get the equation up there, aqueous ammonia is going to remove H plus ions because it's a base, and so the equilibrium responds by more of the propanoic acid dissociating, so the equilibrium shifts over to the right to replace the lost H plus ions. So final part of the question now, this slightly more awkward buffer calculation. So we're told that the student adds this mass of magnesium to one dm cubed of the buffer. We have to calculate the pH of the new buffer solution and we have to give the answer to two decimal places. So straight away, if you're calculating the pH of a buffer, you need to know the H plus concentration and the H plus concentration of a buffer is calculated by knowing the Ka, the acid concentration and the salt concentration. So we need to know the new values for these. There were one mole per decimeter cube but that's changed now. So if we know these we can calculate that and we can calculate the pH. So what effect is the addition of this many grams of magnesium going to have on the buffer? Well essentially metals react with H plus ions so there's the ion equation for magnesium plus H plus so you can see there's a 1 to 2 ratio in there. So what we need to do is calculate the moles of magnesium that's been added. So mass over MR 0.25 moles. So 0.25 moles of magnesium will actually remove 0.5 moles of H plus. From this ratio. So the H plus concentration is going to drop, that means the equilibrium shifts this way to replace them. So the concentration of the propanoic acid is going to decrease, the concentration of the salt ion is going to increase. So I'm doing a sort of ice method here. So remember our initial concentrations were 1 and 1, that's going to drop by 0.5 moles, so that goes to 0.5. This is going to increase by 0.5 moles, so this is going to go up to 1.5. The volume of the buffer is 1 dm cubed, so we've got the concentrations anyway here. So we just put them into our casted over salt expression. So Ka, that hasn't changed obviously, times the new concentration of acid 
divided by the new concentration of salt gives us an H plus concentration of this. When we minus log that, we get 5.35 to two decimal places.